Today you're joined by me, Daniel, and also I have a guest here today, um, Catherine, um, cold weather art, um, so you can check her work yeah. out, all the links will be in the description there, um, so welcome in today. Hi, hello, it's good, good to be here. Awesome, that's good, um, yeah, tell me a bit about yourself, about your work. Oh. Uh well, I'm um, I'm from the UK. You can probably tell by my accent already. Um, I, um, I I study animation um, in the southwest in Bristol, and um, when I'm not super busy doing my animated film, which is what I do all day every day nowadays, um, <laughs> I really just like to draw. I like to draw creatures a lot. It's a recent thing. Um, I've always really liked to draw animals and my natural history, but like recently it's been a lot of creature creature designs, which is just it's it's really fun because they're not like real animals, so you get to kind of like make things up as you go along. Yeah, that's always cool to do, eh? Um, yeah, yeah. It's great fun. Yeah, I, mean, I enjoy doing creatures and animals, making making things up, you know, as I go sometimes. Yeah, who um, doesn't? Yeah. It's like a really good part of art in my opinion mm. i definitely like it um like at the sketching stage kind of a thing because you know you can play around a lot um with sketching because you know <laughs> it's just kind yeah. of yeah yeah that's probably my favorite part of the whole drawing process actually the sketching yeah, definitely <laughs> Even though, like it's one of the longest ones it's actually one of the longest phases of like a drawing but it's also really really fun yeah definitely um, yeah it's kind of the important stage uh, <laughs> it yeah. is yeah. yeah and if your sketch isn't good then the whole drawing is kind of a failure anyway. mm, definitely definitely yeah it, it, at the start when i was like first kind of starting it took me a while to to get to that uh, eventually you know um, I was colouring in images and things like that, and I was like, oh, it's going to be mm. cool, it's going to be good, you know, it's going to have colours in it, it's going to be awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And then it was like, took one of my teachers saying, no, no, you, you, you know, if you have a bad drawing, it's always going to be a bad drawing. And it was like, oh, you know, <laughs> realisation yeah. moment, they're like, you know, if it's not a good drawing, it's not, you know, adding some colour on it, you know. <laughs> It's, it's kind of like it's kind of like the foundations of like a building if you have like bad foundations then like the whole building is just going to be a bit of a mess mm. definitely <laughs> mm. yeah. but you know it's something i do kind of forget at times you know i just be like oh i'm going to paint this it could be good but in the end you know i have to redraw it or, or rework it because yeah it's, mm. it's not looking good there's something wrong here i might not be yeah, seeing that it could be a time. pain yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah i know what you mean but yeah it's a simple thing um that you can you can forget um at times and just you know we'll keep remembering that um you can get better at things and yeah yeah definitely um yeah so i'll go into the, the first question here um so you draw yeah you draw a bit of dragons um so what what mm -hmm. what draws you to create them i think mostly this is like the kind of underwhelming answer <laughs> um I, I think it's mostly the chance to draw like big massive wings because like i just have a thing about drawing like these big gestural shapes and my like, wings are really good for that um and the the other thing is like the the long snouts and like the kind of jagged mouth lines that's the style i draw them in anyway i, I think it all comes down to um using line and like i said gesture because that is something i really enjoy working with in drawing and uh, dragons just kind of lend themselves to it mm. they're like the perfect subject matter for that <laughs> yeah they're, they're very mystical and you know um they you know they've seen in different ways i did um when i was at a course because i did um school of design 
um we had to do mm -hmm. like a few theses and in, in things in our like english curriculum oh, class okay. um because we had like this english class that we had to do to you know be part of the nca or whatever um all right so i studied dragons um Ooh. and it was fun and cool. I, I looked at like how different dragons are interpreted in different um you know different uh cultures you know what sort of dragons are out there and um yeah different interpretations oh and... that's really cool i bet you had fun with that mm. yeah it was um yeah and you know there's no one look now i mean look at um how to train your dragon um when that came out i was like oh my god you know these, yeah. these dragons with um you know multiple heads and there's these big, <laughs> yeah. like fat dragons um that kind yeah, of resemble they, they did some they did some really cool designs with that movie um yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to get my hands on like a proper book of like all the dragon designs yeah in it because we we have a book at, at our university library and it's like the art of dreamworks right mm. and you think oh it's got some how to train your dragon stuff well it does but not very much yeah. because they're covering all the different films so they can't put all them in definitely yeah there's so much for dreamworks the concept art's really gorgeous <laughs> they made a lot of food they made a lot of films yeah they're still making films i think they they, they definitely are and they're still going um strong. yeah <laughs> you know they'll never stop um Hopefully yeah. not, no. No, I think the latest one I'm keen on is Puss in Boots is doing another film. Um, which I yeah, I have it. heard about yeah. that. Because <laughs> mm. um, growing up, I think one of the first kind of DreamWorks films I can remember was Shrek. You know, Shrek was it? Um, yes, it's one of my favourites. Um, and yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's a classic, you know, I had it on VHS, you know, video format. Um, oh, so, you know, it was fun. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. Well, that would be one of the movies that would be, you know, be homesick or something and it'll be over and over and over again watching it. That's really good. <laughs> um, but yeah, and mm. also, you know, with that, um, I think we got the DVD version at one stage, and the DVD version had, you know, how they made it and everything like that, um, which was really cool to see because it behind all the scenes. I always enjoyed a lot of that stuff, you know, behind the scenes. Behind the um, scenes? Oh, me too. Yeah, I, I really enjoy uh, uh, like moving behind the scenes, like practical effects as well. It's yeah. one of my favorite things. Yeah. It's, it's awesome to see. I first got into it so I was watching um, when I was young, um, Walking with Dinosaurs. Um, and that eventually bring out, you know, how they made Walking with Dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. um, so that was cool to see how they kind of built the dinosaurs to make them look as realistic as they can, how they base them off the actual skeletons and um, how they talk to the philosophers or the the uh, what they called the archaeologists um yeah that's quite cool to see um, yeah it's really cool how to it's really cool to see like how much work goes into like something like a tv show or a movie hmm. definitely <laughs> yeah there's lots of fun i think um one of cool experiences was we had a dreamworks tour kind of a thing um in Te Manawa, there's a big museum here in New Zealand. Um oh. so they visited here in, in Wellington and they had a big thing on. Um and they did have how to train your dragon there as well. Um oh, wow. lots of they had lots of like clay models of characters, early sketches of characters, um Oh, it sounds amazing. And, you know, I showed my parents that and they were like, well, this, you know, they they finally understood in a way kind of what I wanted to do, what, you know, where I wanted to be, um, kind of a thing. <laughs> um, 
um oh well, that's what, so cool you know what i was actually kind of yeah doing <laughs> or trying to do you know um, oh that's amazing <laughs> yeah, so that was a cool um thing to do yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So you have this piece, you know, along together, alone together. It's called. Um, I was wondering, yes. you know, where you got the look for those cats. You know, did they come from anywhere? They're... Yeah, there's um, there's quite a specific story behind that, and I'm amazed I can still remember it. <laughs> but one one of the main sort of influences on like the design of those creatures was I'm not sure if you know about it but there's this content aware scale black cat okay. meme where like the, the cat's neck kind of like extends and it gets really long and its eyes kind of bulge out <laughs> and like I, I just thought that was like really funny and like kind of silly and I like, wanted to sort of make something off that um I was like kind of inspired by cryptids at the time because like I really like cryptids and I just wanted to draw something like really spooky, like a kind of elongated, thin creature. And yeah, I was in like a really silly mood when I made the creature. I think I was talking to someone at the time and just joking about. <laughs> I initially imagined like just one and its original name was just the cursed cryptid. It was just this dumb thing I drew in my nose. Yeah notes in lectures and in sketchbooks kind of like drawing appearing around looking weird mm -hmm. and uh, I, I kind of drew more of them like over the months and sort of years like drew them all together in little groups and at that time I was watching a lot of fantasy movies and shows and particularly like the Dark Crystal Netflix show yeah, yeah. which was when I first watched it like man I, I love that show. I still love it. It was a really, really big influence on me. So I kind of wanted to make them more into sort of a race of creatures with like cult, a culture and stuff, rather than just one character. So now they're just kind of they're this kind of like race of creatures that I have. I draw them sometimes. I've been neglecting the poor little babies. I haven't drawn them for a while, but they'll they'll, they'll come back. They'll come back. Yeah, well, that's awesome. You know, um, it. It's it's always fun to do things like that, um, just play around, and it's surprising sometimes where they take you, you know, um, that, you know, you had this fun idea, just playing around with it, and then you've developed it into something a little bit more interesting. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the best ideas come from just screwing about in your sketchbook, really. Mm. Definitely just having a fun, that's why it's, you know, it's important, yeah. um, you know, to just to have fun and not expect much from, from it, from things that you're creating. Um, I think when you, and, yeah. <laughs> and like not to think like every piece, sorry, just like, just, it's important not to get into the sort of mindset that like every piece I have to draw has to look amazing because mm. otherwise you'll kind of work yourself into a bit of a rut. Definitely. You know, if you yeah. have all that pressure, I've got to create this amazing piece and, um, you know, I've got this many hours to do it and I'm going to create this amazing piece. You know, it, it, it's not always work out weird. If you take that pressure away um, and just create for the fun of creating, um, I think that's when, you know, you end up with better work, you know, um, in the end. Um, more fresher ideas and things like that because you know you're not putting this pressure you're not kind of going for you know what you think is is awesome you're just kind of having fun and playing around um yeah definitely obviously there is there is some pressure in, in the industry and, and things like that to create work um but you know there's ways around working with it um you know with that pressure for for me you know i have to kind of keep creating artwork for you know this youtube channel so i've got to keep creating a certain amount of pieces each week or each you know each two weeks really um mm. 
but you know I, I find ways around it i find ways to still have some fun play around with um my time and sometimes i do go on tangents where i just have a fun idea that you know and just draw my sketchbook or just um think of that i want to do um and i just go with it sometimes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's important um, to just muck about and also um, set aside time to do art for yourself, um, art that you want to do rather than like something you have to do like for the college, university or for your, for your job or something like that. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they go hand in hand, um, you know, you don't kind of get too much of, you know, your work done. It, it gets challenging to keep going. Um, I found that in design school, you know, doing all these, you know, different design projects and um, things, um, I would turn most of them into kind of drawing as much as I can turn, you know, if I had a design a poster, I would make sure that you know whatever i was putting on the poster would be something i could draw um basically um mm. but also you know i always made some time to kind of do a little bit of doodling you know whether it was kind of my daily sketches i just did kind of a um a drawing every morning um i would basically come to course and make sure I was like five ten minutes early in the class just doodling and drawing whatever just to start my day um and that what kept me going that was like oh yeah I've drawn today you know I'm pumped up I can keep going <laughs> um yeah it kind of gets your mind ready for the day right mm, yeah definitely um mm. I was actually you know planning because at the moment I'm working at night I was actually planning to switch it um, to, to to the morning um, to see if that works again. <laughs> um, but then I, I got a little bit sick and I was like, no, I have to keep on the schedule I am because if I, you know, if I change the schedule, it's just going to, it's going to blow me, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to get any work done and I'm just going to get more yeah, sick, yeah. you know, you got to look after your health with that, so, um. Yeah, that is really important, actually. It's hard to lose sight of that, too. Yeah, so... But I will be looking at flipping my switch. I'm flicking the switch to, to day to not daytime. Um, we'll see if that works. I'll trial it again for a little bit and see if it works well. Um, oh, that's good. I hope it does. I hope it works out. Um, if not, at least I tried and, and be like, okay, it didn't work for me, you know? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, at least you, at least you tried, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, you have quite a little bit of social media following on Instagram. Um, have you done anything to grow your Instagram? So, the, like, the amount of followers I have right now and, the, like, the amount of attention I'm getting at the moment it's actually quite a recent thing mm. um people already liked the cryptids and then like i, I posted a couple of drawings of dragons i noticed that people really like those so like at the moment i'm kind of posting just my dragon drawings like just kind of to see how long like how much of a following i can build up like how how long can i keep this going which i, I hope it does keep going up. <laughs> uh, and um yeah I, I do several things um i make sure i post about the same time uh, i try to post on the same days each week it doesn't always go according to plan but you know life gets in the way <laughs> and I, I also use a lot of hashtags in my posts um I'm finding ones that with like, this is like very niche, right? But ones with the word core at the end are quite popular. Like one I use is hashtag cryptid core. And I found out that these relate to like this quite popular subculture of internet and Tumblr aesthetics. 
So I'll be tapping it. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's always good, you know. Um, yeah, following um, what kind of is popular. Quite cool to see. <laughs> Cut out there, still there. Yeah. Um, it's quite a decent following though, you know, it's nearly nearly 7k there, which is pretty cool. Um, I can't say much, do you have a, like a hundred, hundred something there? Um, yeah. Still there. But, you know, um, I'm fun creating and, you know, for my YouTube, I've been growing that. Um, with that, I just kind of post what I um, post. <laughs> um, yeah. I was wondering if you uh, self-taught. I think you must have cut out there for a second. Uh, we'll see if I can get her back on. Uh, you there? But yeah, I've been working on this piece. This piece here um, is my Dino Boy. It's a new book um, that she'll be back in two seconds. Um, it's a new book that I'm looking at creating. Um, but for now, I just needed a piece to create. I just needed uh, something to work on because I knew that a book um is a big project so i've done them before um but you know it's challenging um to do books so i thought you know do an illustration um of you know these characters together that way you know i can still do a piece i can still have fun creating the characters um, and I thought that was fun, you know. Uh, are you back? Hello. Hey, uh, welcome back. Hi, oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, my, I did, yeah, my internet is uh, surprisingly bad in the area where I live. That's all good. You know, it is what it is. Um, we can't control these things, unfortunately. You know, um, I think yesterday my net was being mm. funny. Um, and sometimes you can just yeah, reset the, the net and it's all good. Sometimes it's like, no, it's actually a bit worse than that. You know, they might be doing works up the road or something like that. Um, um, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, it goes like that, doesn't it? And same with, you know, microphones and headphones and um, apps as well. It all plays up, um, especially when you, you need it the most. <laughs> You know, and I had a yeah. I know, right? <laughs> this is the price we pay for this technology. Yeah, um, I think it was last nah. last week. Um, you know, it was pretty tight on time and um, getting this you know stream done uh, with an artist, and my microphone wouldn't work, and I was like, oh no, you know, oh, what, what's man. going on? And it was like it took like ten fifteen minutes just to try and work it out. Then I was like. I had my backup microphone, oh, I was like, I'll plug that in, done, and I had to use my backup microphone, um, and that worked fine, so, you know, um, obviously not this quality, but, you know, it, it worked. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, like, and at least it works, I thought it wouldn't be as great quality, because it's just a backup, you know, but at least it, at least it worked. Yeah. It's actually yeah. not so bad, um, per se, you know, um, that's good, that's good. with this mic, there's no kind of background sound. The other mic has a tiny bit of background sound. It's not that I've dealt with it. You know, I've had that, that old microphone, which is just a, um, one that goes in my headphones, um, you know, and then I bought an actual kind of microphone thing, um, which took me a little bit to get around because it's, I actually have to hold it or put it somewhere. Um, I have to talk close to it. You know, it took me a bit of play around to get that into it. 
Um, hmm. Yeah, I was just um, wondering, are you self-taught? Oh, um, yeah, I have a thing about self-taught. It makes, it makes me sound like I have qualms or like <laughs> about self, self-taught. But I, um, but when I read the word self-taught, I think, like, well, I don't think anyone is like truly self-taught mm. because like, I, I think like people learn from each other, even if they didn't go to art school, like people learn from each other and other artists, they love books and like YouTube videos. Yeah. So uh, we all learn from somewhere, I, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> but like, I, th I think for me, because um, I, I do still go to art school. I've been there for a little while. Uh, like I said, I'm on an animation course and I've learnt a whole bunch of useful things from that. It's been really, really good. But I do also seek out stuff to learn from myself. Um, nowadays, I do watch a lot of YouTube videos on art. Um, for, for example, I learned a lot of human anatomy from uh, Proko. He's, he's really good. And also Aaron Blaze, the old Disney animator, yeah. very, very good. He appeals to me because he loves to draw animals, just like I do. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just just looking at other artists' work is really, really helpful. Like, last week I finished a graphic novel, and I love the way the author, like, drew the people environments in that. So I was kind of studying the drawings as I read it. So, like, even when... You're relaxing you can learn you know mm. definitely well yeah I, I don't think there's like a um a, I mean, there could be a truly self-taught artist out there um but i don't think it really does exist because you know we all yeah we all learn from others usually uh, you know watch youtube videos mm. um read books you still gotta learn it from somewhere <laughs> um yeah, there's always someone who came before you um, who you can learn from. Exactly. And, it, you know, it makes it so much easier because these artists, some of them have spent 30 years, you know, getting good at where they can teach you in a couple of hours what they've learnt, you know? Um, so... Yeah, exactly. Like, the whole process is, like, just a little bit faster. Hmm. <laughs> exactly. You know, so... Yeah, you always learn from others, and it's always really helpful. Um, you know, having communities out there to help you is is really great. Um, just I yeah, it's like, one of the really good things about the internet. Yeah, I think just be positive about getting help. You know, um, out there because I mean, a lot of us artists do enjoy you know you know helping other artists, whether it's you know going over their work um if they have something to say um you know and just having a kind word as well is is great um you know, we all yeah definitely yeah <laughs> all here to help usually there are obviously those ones that um just kind of comment rant i guess and dislike things mm. and have their opinions <laughs> Um, but the majority out there do want to help, um, even just chaining, chaining away with other artists is really helpful, you know, doing this YouTube thing with, and talking with other artists is really helpful, um, for me, but obviously, hopefully you guys watching the YouTube videos as well, um, because you know, I get to share share ideas and opinions, and um, kind of relate to a lot of these artists as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, yeah, I really enjoy talking to other artists and just like just seeing like just just kind of picking their brains about stuff. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's fun, and I enjoy these. Um, yeah, the, what I like about you know these videos and things is it is kind of mm. more casual per se you know as far as I know as far as some, some streams are more like you know, five questions and they answer them or something 
um, where with these streams, what I like to do is just chat and I do do ask questions, but mostly to just guide the conversation and keep it going. Um. <laughs> mm, yeah, I definitely prefer this kind of format as well. It makes it, you know, fun to listen because sometimes um, I've listened to a lot. Um, one channel I, I follow a lot is Bobby Chio's channel. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. And, you know, he's had countless artists that I can relate to, you know, um, some with kids, you know, talking about their, you know, the kid's life and how they deal with kids and art at the same time. And, um, mm -hmm yeah <laughs> the struggles they they talk about sometimes it's just it's just awesome to to have someone there um they can relate with you're like oh yeah i did that i remember that yeah. <laughs> i know how that felt oh there's someone else out there that feels the same you know um it makes you feel less bad i guess <laughs> um yeah it kind of helps you along with like whatever you're dealing with at the moment yeah. Um, yeah, what is your schedule like at the moment? Um, at the moment, like I said, I am working on my animated film for mm. university. So most days of the week, I try to work on it five days a week, like the, the working week, Monday to Friday, yeah. because I think it's really important to have those two days on the weekend as a break um, I, I do work Saturdays so I guess that isn't really a break but at least it's a break from like doing my animation yeah yeah um yeah and um I, I actually get up quite early um and I like to start working about 9 a.m hmm. um re recently I've been working on a side storyboarding project someone so I, I spend an hour on that first every day but then most of the day is just my animating um so i take breaks i actually do take quite a few breaks mm. um but, but they're not most of them are not long breaks most of them are like two minutes walking around yeah. because yeah. i really don't do not like to just sit at my desk for hours on end yeah yeah definitely it, it does mm. get challenging i i have that you know um just you know going to grab a drink or, or whatever it is it's actually really helpful um and it gets challenging to know that it's like oh if i step away from this it's going to be two less minutes or or it's half an hour less painting time um but you know i've been watching you know how many hours i've actually been doing and um seeing that it's actually not, you know, <laughs> it, you know, I spend the whole day just not doing much really because I've just been sitting on my computer, you know, um, if I mm. had gone away, you know, um, had a nap or, or whatever it was and then come back to it, I did much more, you know, um, so just, yeah, knowing your body and knowing when to go have a break and go have a walk, um, coming back to it um, and I've had a struggle with in the past I did a rotoscopy um, animation thing and that was yeah. you know, move this mm -hmm. this image save it move this image save it move this image save it um, all day for you know eight hours a day or something and, you know, mm -hmm. my body was aching after doing it <laughs> you know it, it was like um, did it for the whole weekend or something and then monday was like barely walking you know <laughs> from doing that um yeah i've i've also worked on a rotoscoping animation for someone at my university actually yeah, and it can get really really repetitive i mean mm -hmm. like the good thing is that like i don't know about you we well, yeah, obviously you were like you trace over like live action footage right so you don't really have to think about it that much yeah so you could just put on a podcast in the background um which is all very well and good if you have 
a nice supply of podcasts, but like, I run out of that stuff quite quickly because it's pretty much all I listen to. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I even struggle to find stuff to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is a lot out there, so... <laughs> um, but... Yeah, it's just it's just trying to find it that's yeah. often the problem. Yeah. I find music, you know. Um, I can listen to some podcasts and things like that and, and be okay with still painting. Um, but in the end, sometimes it just distracts me. Um, so usually just music. Yeah, I, I get what you mean, yeah. Um, well, I often, I kind of switch between the two sometimes. Yeah. If I need to concentrate more, then music is definitely the go-to. Yeah, but there are other are times I can listen or watch anything and, and still paint. Um, but I can't, you know, I have to watch something I'm not so interested in, you know, like um, if it's a show yeah. I, I really like, like, mm. um, you know, lately I've been watching Masters of the Universe. Um, oh, okay. another, another He-Man remake kind of thing. Um, it was interesting, the <laughs> art style and just the um, story and everything like that, um, which is quite cool. You know, I, I in those kind of shows, I have to kind of watch because I like watching like every little detail of what happens and where the characters go and, you know, what he said and what she said, you know, what they actually, you know, get to know the characters and everything. Whereas if I'm watching something like, you know, podcasts on YouTube, that's, I'm not so interested <laughs> in, um, but just like listening to it, um, then that's fine. Um, but I can't watch anything I'm actually interested in, um, or things that might learn or teach me things sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no, I get, I get what you mean. Uh, I was actually trying to watch a Netflix show while I was trying to draw the other day. And, like, I found I couldn't focus on either of the things. I couldn't focus on the show, and I couldn't focus on my drawing. So I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. Yeah. It, it's... I can do it when I'm kind of just maybe vaguely painting something, you know? Not so focused mm. on the detail or anything like that. Um, but... Yeah, it it does get distracting, so that's why I just usually listen to music while I'm painting. That's my painting time, um, and I just don't don't draw or paint while I'm watching things. Usually, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I often try and separate out the watching and the the drawing too. Yeah. Um. I used to be able to, you know, but I did you know, find out that I actually wasn't drawing as much as I'd like to when I was, you know, watching stuff. <laughs> or, or pause or pause drawing or pause the show so I could keep drawing, you know, play here and back and forth sometimes, but yeah. Um So, you mm-hmm. know, I was wondering what your, you know, next goals and ambitions are. Um, I would like quite to work in animation. Uh, my, my kind of little animation style is a, a 2D. So most of those jobs are on like TV shows, which uh, would, they'd be great fun to work on. But I do really want to get involved in like feature film productions. Mm. Especially those that use animation in like really cool ways, like Spider Verse or Arcane did. Uh, I, I think they were really creative in the way they used animation. And uh, I also think it would be amazing to be able to animate some dragons. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not exclusively aiming for Viz Dev, that's like concept art. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a very niche, very small area. But um, it would be really, really cool to be be able to work in in that someday um like maybe maybe for a little while um i also been kind of recently thinking like it would be kind of cool to create like maybe a little short film based on the cat cryptids 
how I draw sometimes in like the kind of weird little desert world uh, because I, I like to draw that in my free time. Mm. Um, but it would be really cool to kind of flesh that out a little bit more. Yeah, that, that could be fun. I could see that working out, um, you know. Yeah, either a graphic novel or a short film. I think a short film would be really quite fun, though, because you get to have the sound in there as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely... a lot more work. Yeah, it is. But fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It is the thing sometimes. There's a, you know, you have these cool ideas, but... Um, they are a lot of work, like I was saying before. Um, with this mm. piece, you know, you see me creating the background. Um, it's actually for a book that I'm hoping to create. Um, and I just was like, I know that a book is a really big ambition, really big thing, and I I got to keep painting, and I I don't have the time to just you know, I need like a week or two just to work out the pages, where they're going and where the characters are sitting and everything like that. I haven't even kind of designed my characters. So it's just like, I need an illustration just to play around with what the characters could look like. Um, so that's what I did. I was like, yeah, do that. Um, and sometimes doing those little chunks does help a lot. You know, you've already created those characters, what they kind of look like. Their long necks is really fun. Um, so there's already a lot of work being done um, there that you can move forward with it, really. Um, so. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a lot of work. I think um, I think people sometimes underestimate how much work, right? Even artists themselves, if they haven't done something something like a book like you say if they haven't done that for a while they kind of underestimate how much work it could be Mm, mm. yeah yeah a lot of people do underestimate how much work goes into these things and um yeah how much time it does take to create things sometimes oh yeah it's a lot of time yeah (laughs) um but yeah um Awesome, thanks for joining me today. Um, it's been awesome. No problem, I had a really good time. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome, um, you can check out, I'll just get your work up. You can check out Catherine's work here. Um, at Cold Weather Art, um, you also have a Deviant Art as well. Um, so that, I do, yeah. Huh? There's not too much on there at the moment, but there will be in the future. Oh, yeah. I fair think. enough, fair enough. But you can check out all your work on Instagram. Um, there are the links down in the description. Um, I just put your Instagram in there, and they can find your DeviantArt on the link there mm-hmm. on your Instagram. Awesome. So, yeah, it's been great having you. Keep drawing, everyone. Keep creating. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.